Thanks for joining us on our comic book coffee break. I'm Nick Gunning. I'm Eric Mickles, also known online as Dust vs. Tweak. Today I'm drinking a little Newman's Own, and it's hot this week after your complaint last week that I was had too much iced coffee. It was it was uh, it was a note, and I took it to heart. <laughs> wow! So it's piping hot. Whoops. A uh, little bit of creamer. It's got some Irish cream uh, mm-hmm. flavoring in there, so yeah. I'm, I'm having a good day. Well, you got to get used to warm coffee again because we're almost into September. I'm wearing a sweatshirt. I'm so excited. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be drinking uh, mug root beer, but I'm gonna oh. be drinking it in my my mug. <gasps> oh, I'm drinking okay. mug in a mug. Mug in a mug. I had wow, thought of that. Inception yeah. type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I got to tell you right away, right up front, as a disclaimer, as we're talking about seasons changes. My allergies are a wreck today, Mm -hmm. all right? So if you're noticing my red puffy eyes or this box of Kleenex or the sneezing that I will undoubtedly be doing throughout this hour, uh, you can blame Mm. the seasons on that. I'm sorry. Uh, As a representative of the seasons. Yeah. I apologize. No. Uh, Yeah, I don't know because uh, I always get allergies at the end of this month, but nothing's happened. Huh. But I'm also Well, different place. Yeah, I'm in the... Uh, Yeah. I'm in a different that place. Can yeah, that could happen. Uh, I've just been told that mug root beer doesn't have any bite, and that's true. It's a sweeter root beer. It is. It so is. Yeah. It, it's a root beer for the candy yep. crowd. Exactly. Whereas barks will put hair on your back, whether you want it or not. Yeah, man. At summer camp, whenever we went to the uh, like the camp store. Yeah. Barks root beer all the way. Barks Always. root beer. Give me. Uh, yeah. Gosh, probably like Butterfinger. Give me some Butterfinger, and then uh, Barks root hmm. beer. Hmm. I always used to get those sour straws. That was mm, my thing. Mm-hmm. Like sour apple, sour straws, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Anyway. It's funny that somehow I had, like, my parents had $20 for me to spend at the camp store on a bunch of candy during the week. But if I asked for $20 yeah. for, you know what, I, I yeah. get it. It's, things were I, tight. You're right. Understood. I'm wiser now. Uh, yeah. Hey, this show is brought to you by the Radio Meanwhile Network. And you can find more about this show and others like it at our network's website, radiomeanwhile.com. Other shows on the network include Three Nice Things, <gasps> where we force ourselves to say three nice things about a movie with a bad and often earned. Often, often is that reputation mm-hmm, earned. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, sometimes re- we do things that, like, the reputation kind of is that it's, like, a very bad movie. But then you watch yeah. it or you realize, like, the louder people. Say something like Twilight. A lot of people yeah. really like that movie, but yeah. it also has a reputation of being very bad. So which is it? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good we'll question. talk about Good that question. on all the book show. Hey! Uh, radio 64 featuring video game music mm. remix radio. Previously on X-Men, the podcast to look back on X-Men comics, movies, shows, characters, and more. Most recently, a spotlight on Storm, yeah. Mistress of the Elements. <laughs> wow, I'm glad my headphones went off right there. <laughs> <laughs> 9021, here we go. A 90210 rewatch podcast mm. hosted by a 9021 expert and a 9021 novice mm-hmm. and... Uh, the new kid on the block, 90s music, Got Me Like, where we take a look back at one kicking 90s track each week. <laughs> we, Eric, we talk comic books. Yeah, let's. Uh, who wants to start? Gosh, Eric, I don't know. Okay. Hey, you know what? I'll start. I've got a weird week this week because I did me read too, comics. Buddy. It does translate okay. to me reading like five different comics. Okay. Four of them are two different series. You know what okay. I mean? Yes. And but really, I've spent a lot of my comic book time watching things. Yeah, I uh, saw. So I follow you on Twitter. I'm aware. Basically, the with the new Batman games coming out, like sure. Gotham Knights, and uh, and now the trailer for Batman. I've been in that kind of mood, and I realized there's like s- stuff I haven't done, or uh, yep. was in the mood for. So I watched Joker. Oh. The okay. uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Yes, I'm familiar. Guess what's not my cup of tea? Joaquin Phoenix's Joker? The whole movie. You know what? Okay. Joaquin Phoenix's performance is probably as good as you heard. Uh, okay. Probably Oscar worthy. Yes, okay. But it's a performance in a very like shallow film riddled with a mm. bunch of cliches and... Uh, like twi- twists that you can see coming, and if you can't, then maybe watch other movies <laughs> so you <laughs> can be prepared for this stuff. It's there. There was a violent stabbing scene that I looked away for. I'm a baby. I muted the TV as soon as I saw the hand on the knife. It was broadcasted yeah. very quick. I Good was call. like, I'm gonna look away. So Good I, call. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I muted and looked away. Um, but gosh, I just don't know. I mean. 
I watch this because I'm a Batman fan and, you know, comic yeah. book fan and all that stuff. So, but is this, like... I, I don't know if I had to, now that I've watched it. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if I had to watch The Joker. Yeah. As, like, a Batman fan or anything. Because, like... I also, I mean, gosh, I don't even know if it's worth dissecting this at this point. Because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like, almost a year old now. But, like, yeah. I don't know what the message of this movie is trying to be. If, it, if it's trying to tear down the American, like, mental health uh, industry, I guess you can even say, then it does a pretty good job at that. But at the end, okay. when he is Joker and everybody's like, we love J- Joker. And it's like, well, we understand how joaquin phoenix character became joker and maybe we're supposed to have sympathy even though his actions are terrible and we shouldn't um allow that and everything but the the people that follow in his lead we haven't seen their story so it just seems like a bunch of angry white guys out in the streets Uh, smashing stuff up and then it's just kind of like well okay so but then they also have kind of like a trump-like figure being played with uh thomas wayne so it's just kind of like, well, which, who, who's what? You, obviously, right. you're trying to make this allegorical, but in what way? Who? Yeah, it just seemed very confused. It seemed like you got the guy who did the, uh, the those those movies. What are the the Hangover films to do your okay. Martin Scorsese wannabe film? Huh. So okay, uh, he's the director. The Todd got Phillips, it. and he directed like oh, the Todd Hangover Phillips. films. Okay. Um. I'm... Anyway, yeah, it definitely seems like. I don't know. This was never on my list, but I'm yeah. interested to hear your take on it. So it's, thanks for sharing. Yeah, it's just, it didn't do much for me. It, and it, you know what? I didn't want to watch it because I thought it would be too dark and too violent. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. it almost wasn't either because oh, it's just, okay. it's it's just so kind of like distracted and I don't know, I kind of dull. So okay, I never need to watch it again is the thing. And I never will. Is okay. my plan. So it's just not, and at the it's not. Gosh, <laughs> if you're gonna do <laughs> a movie about Joker, right? Maybe give him like elements of Joker. I guess yeah. because like he's just he. They're playing too sympathetic. At the end, he's like, "What do you get when you take a mentally unstable person and throw him in a city that doesn't care?" I'm like, "Well, this is way more on the nose than Joker would ever be." It's yeah. not like he's doing. It's not like he's doing any of the things that we see in joker like with uh there's no like fear not fear talks but there's no like laughing gas or like the flowers or anything so he's not even like if in the way that like batman begins it's like how does why does he do the things Mm -hmm. for his suit that he does there's none of that with joker but like i guess that was the point but if that's the point then what's the point (laughs) yeah anyway uh and then i decided to watch through uh the dark knight trilogy again oh okay been a while for me on that i can't remember the last time i watched at least i watched batman begins not that long ago Mm -hmm. you know within the past couple of years but i haven't seen the others in a very long time um batman begins is still my favorite it's still so much fun it's still so cool it's still like it's still great i love all the performances in it you know what's weird watch again the thing about time healing all wounds katie holmes her acting isn't bad in it she's not Mm. I don't think she's actually that bad in it. Like, I watched her performance in this, like, her facial expressions and her delivery. Like, they're all strong and on the level that Begins is going for. But she's just such a baby face in this Mm. movie. And, like, who else? Like, Killian Murphy is, like, the youngest actor besides her then. And then you're getting to Christian Bale and Liam Neeson. You know what I mean? So she just seems... She see it's like those old it's like the '90s films that have everyone's an adult action hero except you also have one kid and yeah. that's that's Katie that's Holmes right. in it so yeah. it's just so well I, you're right I mean because hey I buy Maggie Gyllenhaal and and, yes. uh, and Christian Bale like I buy that relationship it's a tougher sell with Katie Holmes definitely yeah. so I feel bad because like it's just like she's not doing a bad job she's just so she just seems so fresh she's mis- she's miscast I mean yeah. it's like being like. Christian Bale and Alexis Bledel in Batman Begins. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just doesn't yeah, really, yeah. it doesn't really make sense. And it's like she doesn't really have a platform to sort of like mm-hmm. shed that, yeah. you know, perception of her. And, and I, no. I don't think the character. It's like they didn't quite know how to how to crack that egg, you know. Um, but yeah, I still love Batman Begins. And you know what? I found myself like laughing kind of giddily 
while uh, Batman is the the whole run where he like he has to get Rachel out of the uh, the asylum because. Uh, Scarecrow's been poisoning all the toxins. Now the cops yeah. are there, so he has to go on that car chase. The scene, it's kind of funny. We've made fun of it over the years where, like, he's on the roof, and the guy's like, he's flying on rooftops! But yeah. there is, like, a, a shot from the streets where you see, like, the car do, like, doing a, a U-turn over the over the roof, and I just thought, like, that's such, like, a crazy concept to see. imagine yeah. yourself, like, in, like, looking up and seeing a car driving on rooftops. And I, yeah. I just was, like, kind of overtaken by it. I was like, this is hilarious. I love it. Den- Denny O'Neill did a novelization of this and mm-hmm. it's pretty solid. Oh, it's, it's a good yeah. Batman book. Yeah. Um, Dark Knight is still probably technically the best. Uh, yeah. There, Every now and then there's something where it comes up and like, well, that's kind of still, like it's not as violent or dark in some ways as I remember. I still get chills during the uh, scene where Batman is having to stop the SWAT team from killing the wrong hostages. Because uh, Joker's yeah. uh, dressed the hostages as clowns and the right. the bad guys as doctors. And so he has to go. In, and then, like, the music's swelling and the camera's spinning around. And Batman's just doing his thing. I always get chills during that. Mm. Uh, and I found myself getting teary-eyed at the end. Even though the whole, like, he's not the hero we need but the one we deserve. Like, it's one of those things that seems like a simple concept. But then Nolan just does that patented overcomplication. And you're like, yeah, well, yeah. okay, but is he? Yeah. <laughs> it seems like I don't, can- I don't enjoy that one. I understand. I understand uh, it's a claim. It's not one that I enjoy watching. Uh, I've never I haven't seen The Dark Knight Rises since I saw it in theaters eight wow. years ago. Yes. Still don't like it. Still, still not a fan. I, I almost dislike it. Even it's just one of those things. I talk about this all the time on the X-Men podcast because every X-Men movie usually ends with a cliffhanger that, deli- that does not deliver on a promise in the next yeah. movie. Oh, definitely. Like X-Men yeah. 3 or like First Class is going to be like, guess what? And then it doesn't do. So Dark Knight, the promise between Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises is like a painful one to me. Because I almost would rather we had only gotten Begins and Dark Knight and had been just a duology. And then the third one comes out and it's like, let's, I, I just don't, I don't even know if it's worth like, tearing down right now i don't i feel like it's incredibly muddy and incredibly dull and i feel like the action in it is kind of toothless at times and it's the the whole bane breaking batman's back is something you can do in serialized media in a comic because you can take batman out of the picture for like a year or so but in a movie you just realize that the character you're seeing the movie for isn't on screen for two hours it's two hours and 40 minutes that's a long one anyway you that's, know what that's batman and robin length the thing for that movie for me and kind of for the whole trilogy but i think particularly with dark knight rises is that i just view that as an elseworld story it's very you much know? an elseworld story for sure and i'm okay with it in that way mm-hmm. you know like if you approach it with that mindset uh i think it i think it works for me but i get why you don't like it um john blake is not in it as much as i remember i remember Mm. it being like john blake all the time yeah uh but he's really not in it that much so he should use his real name (laughs) that is still insufferable but he he is a character is less annoying this time around than i thought uh and hathaway's catwoman feels a little like too try hard i don't know yeah but and bane's plan is absolute mud I, the, the, oh my gosh. So I watched this on Blu-ray for the first time. Um, (laughs) And in the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, there were scenes shot for IMAX aspect ratio. And they included those in that aspect ratio. And I actually found it really distracting because you're watching either the last two films and it's in just regular widescreen. And then it fills up your whole screen to do IMAX. And then it goes back to widescreen. Oh, that's bizarre. And it will do that between different scenes. And... Yeah, I found it more distracting than enjoyable. So I watched one of the times I saw Superman Returns in theater. We did an IMAX 3D, mm-hmm. but it was only certain sequences that right. were in 3D, hmm. and it would like flash on the screen. Put your glasses on. It was yeah. not a good way to watch that movie. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, I kind of think I don't need to watch The Dark Knight Rises again anytime soon either. But I still love the first two. Okay. Uh, and then should I keep going with the stuff I watched, or do you want? Yeah, you might as well. No, roll it. Let it roll. Let it ride. All right. Well, then I watched uh, Harley Quinn season one. <laughs> okay. All, all of you, season one. It's what did very you think? funny. I don't know. Th- you know, funny. I think when I was younger, I would have bought this show on DVD and watched it a whole bunch. But uh, now I just kind of enjoyed the time I had with it. it. It's funny. Sometimes it's a bit like cruder than I than my comedic tastes go for. But it's yeah, all, it's I agree. All, but it's like 
it's so crude in such a obscene way that like I can't help but laugh too. Kind of yeah. like how like the first Deadpool will be crude, but in such like a dumb, immature way. Whereas yeah. uh, Harley Quinn will be crude in such like a whoa, this is what Deadpool wanted to try to say. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's true. Lake Lake Bell oh my has gosh. Poison Ivy in that series. Poison She's Ivy perfect. is hilarious. Yeah, uh, Kite yeah. Man cracks me up. Yeah, yeah. Kite yeah. Man kills Kendra every time yeah. when he's like, uh, I can't even remember the phrase. Um, Alan Tudyk as Clayface can can make us laugh a lot uh, with with his overacting. There's there's a yeah. lot of I. His weirdly, Joker's hilarious. Weirdly, though, I don't like the design of Joker. I just think it's kind of like a weird... Oh, I like it. Do you? I like it. I feel like it's do, going yeah. for the comic book look, but it's also a bit bland. I don't know. I like their Batman in this. I like how he's still, like, the straight man. Yeah. Like, he's the straight man even to Gordon. Gordon, like, killed Kendra. Yeah. Uh, what's his yeah. name? Christopher Maloney? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, yes, I thought season one of Harley Quinn was very funny and looking yeah. forward to season two. Christopher uh, Maloney, who is he? Is he? Is he? He's Hal in in First Flights, right? He's Hal in First Flight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was it was. Oh, Bane! Bane also kills me. And yeah, that's part of the reason I watched Dark Knight Rises again because I was like, I, I they're quoting a bunch of it, but the whole scene where he's like, "I'm this credit card's reckoning," and he's trying to like cut the credit card with scissors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that stuff. Yeah, he's like, "I hate this coffee. I'm gonna blow up the coffee shop." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started playing uh, Batman Arkham Knight, which is the third oh. or fourth Arkham Knight game, uh, Arkham game, depending on how you uh, look at Origins. Okay. I'm uh-huh. liking it. I think the combat's as good as it's ever been, probably the best it's ever been. Um, the Batmobile is fine when you're just driving around the streets, but when Riddler is like, I've made a race course for you, I just I want to punch my screen. Uh, there's been some twists and turns I do not like uh that i think are dumb but you know whatever i haven't beaten the game yet but i'm enjoying it okay. i got one more movie i watched hit it okay i watched justice league dark apocalypse war i still haven't seen the first one well here's the thing i was betrayed and it was watched without me it's, so it happened it's justice league dark in name only i think they called it justice oh. league dark because it's a dark justice league story but this is as much of a justice league dark film as flashpoint was like a batman you know what i mean it's yeah it, it's more so is it not no swamp thing constantine all that constantine's there as a lead zantana's okay. there a little bit swamp things there a little bit but it's really i don't know why they named it justice league dark other than the fact that this is a rated r film uh i'm gonna put the spoiler tags up so if you're watching this and you don't want this spoiled in some ways, uh, mute it or skip until you don't see the spoiler tag up. Boop. All right. Uh, Should we just spoil everything? Spoiler. Like everything everything we can think of? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is... Nick, I, I, I don't know if you're ever going to watch this, but this was like in the press release building up to this. Okay. Um, this is the end of the Flashpoint continuity. Oh, okay. That has been happening in these movies. This, like, that post-New 52. So, like, this is a Justice League... This is just, like, a DC Universe movie. So I think they only called it Justice League Dark to give it the rated R film because there's a lot of gore and there's a couple F-bombs and stuff. It's pretty brutal. So, yeah, it's just, like, all the DC characters going to war against Darkseid, and it's a it does a time jump, one of those two years later thing, because, like, in the first three minutes or so, they fail. Um, and so it's just that kind of, uh, you know, we need to stop it. So it is more akin to watching, like, a, a rated R Flashpoint movie. Okay. So, uh... Interesting. Yeah. I'm excited about Superman Man of Tomorrow. Yeah, well, I that's... Seeing, it's a weird voice cast, but I'm excited to see that. I don't know what's... I don't know if they're doing they're going back to we're only doing standalones or if they're I starting so. like a new Man, do I hope so. continuity. But I have to say, I, I'm not spoiling like all the small things in this because there are a lot of really fun twists in this. And actually, it, it it's very funny at times and made me want the the Suicide Squad in this made me want to uh, go and finally watch Hell to Pay after turning it off after the first five minutes. Um, the one, this movie definitely pushed me to the limit. I'm definitely, like, a bit burnt out with Harley Quinn. Their Harley mm, Quinn yeah. in this is just, it's too much. Oh. Um, because it's one of those things, like, look how violent and wacky she is. Um, but, 
the I found I've never I have not been a fan of most of the in continuity movies they've no. done with this. Nope. Uh, they've done fifteen films in wow. this continuity thing. Um, I I looked at the list. I've enjoyed five. Mm. out of the 50 so i feel like one i always remember teen titans judas contract you that liked, you liked judas me. contract I, I liked um hush more than you did oh yeah batman hush so yeah i'm just such a fan of the comic i didn't like yeah that yeah 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 so i just think um i like i i feel bad for people who have been really invested in this i imagine like if this was the continuity i was watching as a teenager i would have loved it and i probably would have mm. been into the teen type movies too but i've even though i haven't really enjoyed a lot of this continuity and the movies within um i found the end of this affecting like it oh, okay. really kind of got me and left me in a mood afterwards feeling like you know i i haven't loved <laughs> 10 of the <laughs> two yeah, thirds yeah. of these movies the majority, yeah. but it has been going on since 2013 2014 ish and so time. it's been a long time. So it just is, you know, kind of now what I've thought of as the standard. Yeah. So, yeah, it just kind of left me a bit sad, a bit melancholy. Uh, so I thought this movie kind of nailed the landing. Okay. Um, and I, you know, I, I enjoyed the Constantine uh, appearances like Justice League Dark. And uh, I think because I've enjoyed some of the more recent Batman stuff like Hush and Batman vs. Robin, um... And I enjoyed that, the Death and Reign of Superman movie. I think I was just kind of, like, a bit surprised. So I didn't yeah. realize it was coming. Oh, so. I see. Yeah, I, well, until you said that, I didn't realize that either. Well, that, I just didn't really I, yeah, I didn't pay see, much attention to it. So Yeah, I it was in all the news things. They're, like, saying, like, oh, this will be the last one in the continuity. This is going to, you know. So I just... It's I, cool that they ended it. I, I respect yeah. that. I like that they did well, that. Well, the problem, though, is that they tried to get some emotional beats or dramatic moments based off of things that would have mattered if they have ever done it. Because you know how all these movies are just Batman movies and Ju justice league movies. Like they're, they, they, they have a scene on Oa with the green lanterns that should be much more dramatic, but they've never done a green lantern anything yeah, in these true. movies. So like they have John Stewart there. I'm like, you, you never did a green lantern movie. How in this continuity, right. why should we care? There's a, there's a, uh, a moment near the end with the Flash because of he's related to Flashpoint and everything. Yeah, yeah. But we haven't really seen the Flash do anything since True. Flashpoint, so it's just kind yeah. of like. Was it Justin Chambers voicing Flash again? I don't even know if it. It, it okay. sounded a bit different, but it's just one of those things where like all these like moments you're trying to go for would have mattered if you had done anything more than twelve Batman movies yeah. in these fifteen films. So, yeah. and da they try to get some stuff going on with Damien. I could care less about Damien. Whenever yes. he, yeah, I hate that voice because it just reminds yes. me of what an obnoxious little tween he is. <laughs> anyway, I liked Apocalypse War. I, I still need to watch Hell to Pay and Wonder Woman Bloodline in this continuity. And then I still need Boy. to watch uh, Superman Red Sun. Oh, I haven't watched Red Sun either. Yeah. Uh, I'm never going to watch Hell to Pay. Wonder Woman Bloodline was just like, why bother? I yeah. just don't understand well, like, it was, it was her origin in this continuity. Yeah, I would never watch that one again. Like, mm. if it's... Because, I mean, you might as well just watch the Carrie Russell one. It's well, way see, better. He, this is another know? thing that frustrates me. So, you don't like Batman Hush because it's a weird adaptation of the comic. It's a weird, weird adaptation. It's inaccurate and everything. But, now, if they were going to end this continuity, then what's the? why would you do Hush in this continuity? I know, because yeah. Because now the movie we have is in a... I don't know. Why not have just done an out of continuity for it's yeah. It's strange strange decisions. But it is very strange. At the same yeah. point, I guess I should tip my hat to doing fifteen of these films in continuity. It's just yeah. they, they went for the new fifty two vibe. And yeah. That, that thing has been dated for yep. like eight years now. It started dated, yeah. Yeah. So all right, those are the things I watched. Okay. I'll take the spoilers tag off now. All right. That's it. What okay. do you? What do you? I haven't. I talked this whole time. I know. Uh, I haven't watched any comic booky things, so I, I can't. Uh, though I did watch the direct to Disney Plus Lady and the Tramp movie with my son. <laughs> it was weirdly good. Not relevant to our conversation, okay. but I, I was surprised by that. Uh huh. Uh, here, here's some of the Marvel stuff I read. So okay. I read Captain America number three, volume three, I should say, written by Ed Brubaker, uh, illustrated mm -hmm. by Patrick Zercher. This series. <laughs> 
it's just, you know, it started cool with the whole, like, going through his dreams and having this whole, like, dream war and everything. Now, I just don't know what's, I don't know what they're doing. It's the most forgettable series of comic books that I've read in a while. This one was something about a new scourge comes back and villains who are in witness protection are being killed. I don't know. It's just so boring. It just doesn't seem to have a point of view or anything going for right. it. I don't. I, you know, I, I gave this three stars, but again, I remember nothing about this series. Yeah. Well, I guess my two stars probably just reading the three of them as close together as I have. Like the drop in quality is shocking. And I think you're right that it's like there's nothing that's really wrong with it, but it's just like they're also not really doing anything with it. So yeah. I guess I was more irritated at having wasted my time than like I think not Brubaker has just run out of steam at, by this point. Yeah. Seems so. like it. It seems like it. Um in other in other Marvel news, and this this reading, yeah, I've been reading through Black Panther, and it got a lot more like poignant with the passing of Chadwick Boseman, uh, who just was, I mean, amazing in that character and it's just crazy. an amazing this is actor. Forty three. I know. Me looking at my own mortality now, I'm like, I'm 34. I'm not, you know, I'm like nine years younger than him. It's it, crazy. It was really shocking. It and really yeah, was. He, it's. I think about the scene where he's getting mad at uh, when he finds out the truth about Killmonger. And he's like, he knows what he has to do, but he knows that it's not justice yeah. in a lot of ways. He knows that, like, yeah. he's having to clean up for the sins of the fathers. And I remember, like, he just puts a lot of, like, emotion and, like, layers in that scene. And it was just so good. The yeah. whole scene when he, he shows I mean, up and he's just like, as you can see, ah, He's amazing in 42. 21 Bridges was, I feel like, one of the best movies that came out last year. Loved it. But anyway, I started this Black Panther uh, run, and it's collected kind of weirdly. So I wanted right. to, I'm first going to talk about Marvel Masterworks Black Panther Volume 2. Mm -hmm. And you'll remember that uh, last week I was reading uh, Marvel Masterworks Black Panther Volume 1, mm -hmm. and that is the Black Panther stories from Jungle Adventures. And that's the whole, like, introduction of Killmonger, that whole thing is a whole thing with him fighting the Ku Klux Klan. And that kind of ends on a cliffhanger note. Mm -hmm. And then Black Panther gets his own title. And that's where Masterworks 2 picks up. It's the Jack Kirby Black Panther, which is... I, if somebody was a fan of the movie or wanted to know more about the character, the Jack Kirby Black Panther is literally the last thing that I would give <laughs> someone. Because... It's not that they're bad stories. It's just could be anyone. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't make sense at all that it's Black Panther. Because we've just gone from, like, him fighting the Ku Klux Klan in New York City to him going on a quest to return brass frogs to King Solomon's tomb. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps getting okay. weirder and weirder. Yeah. So that's largely what's in Marvel Masterworks 2. Um, then Ed Hannigan takes over. Uh, so we'll pop over to uh, what's collected in Black Panther, the Epic Collection, Volume 2. Ed Hannigan takes over and pretty much just picks up the storyline from Jungle Adventures while making some moderate references to the Jack Kirby stuff to kind of tie it all together. I got to give Hannigan credit because there I've never read issues more incongruous than the Jungle Adventures to or Jungle Action, I think it is, to <laughs> Kirby's Black Panther. I mean, they just, they don't go together at all. So, like, God bless Ed Hannigan for trying to, like, tie them together. Hmm. He does a decent job. Um, so that that's, like, the last two issues of the Black Panther series, and then the rest of the story plays out in Marvel Premiere. It also includes uh, Marvel Team Up 100, which is the story with him and Storm that oh, you yes. were talking yep. about. Mm -hmm. And then it has the 1988 series by Peter B. Gillis. So, I guess... Uh, I would probably say pick up the the jungle action run and then the uh, the Ed Hannigan stuff. That's probably what makes the most sense. But here's how it's collected. If I were to do this all over again, uh -huh. I would say just ignore the Marvel Masterworks because one the just includes stuff. No, no, no. It's just a lot of what's in. Uh, the epic collections are collected in Marvel Masterworks, but oh, Marvel right. Masterworks is very incomplete. Right. Masterworks Volume One just has the Jungle Action stuff, so you don't get his, um, you don't get his origin in Fantastic mm -hmm. Four. Whereas the Black Panther Epic Collection Volume One does the Fantastic Four origin and all the Jungle Action. Then Marvel Masterworks is basically Volume Two is basically just 
the Kirby stuff and a little of the Hannigan stuff. Whereas right. the Epic Collection, mm-hmm. all the Kirby stuff, all the Hannigan stuff, and the 1988 Peter B. Gillis uh, four issue miniseries. Okay. So. All that to say, if you want to be a completist and read through Black Panther, skip the Masterworks, go with the Epic Collections, yeah. because that'll give you the full picture mm-hmm. that Masterworks doesn't. All right. Kirby stuff is insane. Right. That was it for me and Marvel <laughs> this week. What else you got on your reading list? Uh, what else did I want? All right, so I reread Volume 1 of Moon Knight by Warren Ellis. Uh, okay. I have read this before, and yeah. I gave it five stars when I first read it, and I kept the five stars reading it this time around. Nice. Um, the Each issue, it's like six issues. Each issue is standalone. Um, the art is very... What What is this art style that we've seen in, like, Daredevil and She-Hulk, uh, Moon Knight? The very, like... I don't know. I, I don't even know how to... Almost retro... Um, right. almost kind of, uh, what's the art? Andy Warhol-ish in, at some times. Oh, it's, uh, okay. you know, very, like, uh, the panels are very blocky. The art is very colorful. It, I don't know how to d- describe it. Anyway, it's very stylish. The stories are, uh, pretty cool in this one. Um, some things have come out about Warren Ellis that make me feel not great while singing, <laughs> yeah. uh, praises about his work now. Um, but yeah, yeah, I reread this because I, I had it on my library on Marvel Unlimited. Uh, and I know I had read this, but I just reread it to kind of catch up. Um, there's a fun in, there's a fun story in here. That's kind of like the raid. Um, but with Moon Knight where he's trying, where he's trying to walk, uh, he's trying to get from one floor to the top floor to rescue a girl from these thugs. And it's a bit like the raid or uh, dread. Um, and then I, I kept going and I read Brian Wood's take on this now. So that's like at the next six issues. Okay. Uh, I mean, the art is different. It's Greg Smallwood now instead of, um, uh, Delkin Shalvey. So, uh, oh, wow. So the collection, act, no, it's still one through six. I don't understand. Anyway, the point is... <laughs> confusing that's just like with the black panthers it was so hard to figure out like where everything was the point is brian wood is if you were liking the previous issues brian wood is way too chatty for for Uh, that to continue it's a lot that can kill it the dialogue was cool and sparse and stylish in the warren ellis stuff but in the brian wood stuff it's just like here's the whole page and i should have known that because i've read his dmz series and it's nothing but speech bubbles um Mm. and it just it just is too bad because when you're reading this series at the beginning, you're like, oh, cool, this is more like an artist focus, uh, kind of cool style on Moon Knight. Um, and then Brian Wood shows up and is like, yeah, I could do that too, but what if everybody talked for an hour? So, <laughs> um, was there yeah. anything I... What if? I didn't really... And also where the Ellis stuff was very episodic, this became more serialized, but not necessarily more entertaining. Oh, so, okay. I much prefer the other stuff. Apparently, Col- Cullen Bunn came in and uh took over so i'll just keep reading i mean i've okay. i've been enjoying reading like modern moon knight series over the years so the only thing that i've really read with moon knight in it was secret avengers oh yeah and it's not a great showcase for him but he is always intriguing whenever they focus on moon knight it was intriguing but i've never picked up like moon knight so you're vanished there sorry you yeah um so yeah i'll just keep reading that that was okay. my my marvel read of the week All right. Uh, This is not a comic book, but I picked up the August issue of the magazine Remind because it has Linda Carter on the cover. And it's a whole the whole issue is dedicated to 70s superheroes. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. Uh And, you know, it talks about uh, Wonder Woman, talks about Hulk, it talks about Shazam Isis. Uh, Here's a shot of John Davey, who we interviewed over on the All the Books show as Shazam. There's a great uh, 70s TV superheroes quiz. Uh, Eric, I'd like to ask you a few of these questions. Oh, okay. Unprepared. Billy Batson changed into Captain Marvel by saying Shazam. What does Shazam stand for? Uh, strength of Hercules. Okay. Uh, wait. No. I've got the wisdom of Solomon. Yes. The strength of Hercules. Yes. Sh- uh, I haven't memorized what a Zam means. <laughs> mm, okay. Atlas. Atlas. Zeus. Zeus. Achilles, Achilles and Mercury. Mm. Uh, in the TV Wait, series, that's, that's of... annoying. 
Because Why? Zeus is Greek, Mercury is Roman. They needed a Shazam. They needed a Z, Eric. Yeah, okay. Mary Marbles are all different. They're all like female gods, goddesses, I guess you'd say, which, mm-hmm. is, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, this is the August issue on newsstands <laughs> right now. I had a great time with all it. All right. For DC, I read Green Arrow, Black Canary, Volume 2, Family Business by Judd Winnick, illustrated by Mike Norton. Uh, kind of a dud of an issue. So you remember the first volume of this we were talking about a few weeks back? Which yeah, is you crazy. thought it was crazy, yeah. I, a million things were happening. This time, Connor Hawk, Green Arrow's son, is uh, in a coma, and his body is stolen <laughs> from the hospital. And his they coma go to body, in- right? Yeah, yeah. They go to England, and they're trying to find – they think the League of the League of Assassins took him – um, and Batman shows up, and they have this whole thing. So it's Batman, Plastic Man, Green Arrow, and Black Canary facing this like League of Assassins. And Batman's like, I don't think this is the League of Assassins. And that's sort of how this volume ends, where they're like, this is not really what we think it is. So do they bring Plastic Man because he's a detective? I don't know why like they a private eye. Plastic Man. It didn't make a ton of sense to yeah. me why he was there, but he showed up. <laughs> Um, oh, I was just talking about Shazam. I should talk about Mary Marvel a little bit here. Okay. So I talk, I don't think I've talked on this show, but on the All the Books show when we did our Shazam spotlight, when we interviewed Elliot S. Magan, uh, I talked a little bit about Mary Marvel and just how shocking it is to read Mary Marvel versus Supergirl from that time. Uh-huh. And the Supergirl's early Mary living Marvel, at an orphanage. Yeah, Supergirl's living Superman's at an orphanage. And Superman's like, shut up about being, yes. e- even knowing me, you stupid yes. twit. Live in this it's orphanage. Very- you're exactly right. So Supergirl's just always like put upon and meek and mild mm-hmm. and like it's a sad comic book to read. Mary Marvel just does not take crap. Right. She doesn't take crap from anyone. And it's just shocking to read that because this is like the 1940s, you know, and Supergirl was 20 years later acting more like yeah. dainty than Mary Marvel ever was. So the early stuff isn't collected, but a lot of it's just out there free because it's public domain. Yeah. So I, I got a I got a batch of issues that I've been reading on my Nook, uh, starting with Mary Marvel number seven. So I've got about six issues on there that I'm reading right now. It's just a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun. She just did a team up with Bullet Girl, another like classic 40s hmm. um, superhero. Bullet Ish. Man and Bullet Girl were were purchased eventually by DC Comics, and mm, yeah. they do show up from time to time in, in modern continuity. But okay. that was like a an early team up of Mary Marvel and Bullet yeah. Girl. And it was just cool. It was fun. All right. So you can find these public domain. If you just search for old Fawcett Shazam comics, mm-hmm. they're all over the internet. <laughs> so I'm counting that as DC because in now it, you know, the yeah. Shazam properties are mm-hmm. DC, but it was Fawcett at the time. Yeah. And then DC Anything else? turned off the Fawcett with a wrench. I guess so. Like, you I better not did. say Marvel, Captain Marvel. Wait, Yeah. no, you better not. Be Superman? That was the thing? He was just too much like Superman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Can I tell you when I read it was stupid that I only bring up because I wanted to talk about it a little bit? Yeah, talk about what was stupid. It's Twilight, the graphic (laughs) novel series based on the Stephanie Meyer book. Hey, guys, he only read this to make fun of it, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) No, over on the All the Book Show, we're doing a a special episode on Stephanie Meyer with a guest, uh, Kendra from 902 and Here We Go, is going to come talk about teen angst vampire style Mm -hmm. over on the all the book show and i hadn't read them before so i picked up the graphic novels for twilight did you read both my young kim i did read both volumes Uh and they're just very bizarre because they're mostly (laughs) they're mostly black and white and the art style is very manga going for no it is yeah it is kind of it's a it's kind of a manga i don't know it the style i just thought was odd okay but the most perplexing thing to me about it was the use of color because it is like overwhelmingly black and white but some things would just be colorful like suddenly there's a page and all the trees are green or Uh or the sunset is showing or Mm -hmm. you know blood is red or something like that blood is red and oh i know unless you're vulcan yeah then it's green (laughs) you green blooded um (laughs) over the course of these two volumes i kept trying to find a rhyme or reason to the use of color and Uh, i couldn't i don't know so, I just couldn't solve it. Do you think he was trying to chase so, that like Sin City vibe, but with less talent? Well, I kind of thought like there were times when it like, oh, that would have been when there's a big reveal or something to have mm-hmm. color would have been good. But no, I just couldn't quite get the mm-hmm. uh, get the feel of what was going on. Yeah. So I don't know. I haven't read the book, so I can't tell you like how faithful an adaptation right. it was. It was pretty close to the movie. 
which I've seen, but I was mostly just confused about the format. All right. So, well, Twilight. I'll buy you the hardcover of these. Show. No, thank you. All right. Um, yeah, so I've been reading the Terminator Omnibus. Yeah, for a while now. Uh, well, uh, it's because this is massive. Like, they, they say Omnibus, and this is volume one. Um, I've read two of the uh, the stories in here. That's that's eight issues, and they're like, they're they're dense. So th- this this collection is just so cool. This whole collect all all the comics in here. I didn't think I would like these Terminator comics as much as I did. I thought they would be kind of like weird or side stories or whatnot. The the stories in here are so cool, and they kind of like I didn't expect it. I thought it was all gonna be like kind of standalone stories in the Terminator universe. Yeah. Um. Dun, 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 dun. But it, instead, it's it. It starts kind of that way, but then it kind of picks up its own continuity. So the the first like story I read, because the the last two stories I read was um what was it? It was Terminator. The story's called Terminator Secondary Objectives. Okay. Um, that was written again by oh come on, where's my where's my author? Here we go. Uh, nope. No, it was James Robinson again and Paul uh, Galsey. Um. More more Terminators showing up and everything into the past, so they're having to uh, go on the run. They're looking for Sarah Connor, so this is like after Terminator One, before Terminator Two. They always for be Sarah, looking for Sarah Connor. The the, the our our heroes are looking for Sarah Connor, but okay. uh, things aren't going great for them. They they've got this like Terminator human hybrid who's trying to battle back programming and everything. Anyways, they get a Terminator and they reprogram it uh, to to pick a fight with this new Terminator that's showing up. And the last issue is just a whole issue of these two Terminators wrecking up this small town as they're battling each other, driving cars into each other, shooting each other, getting into these massive... Like, the town is, like, demolished as these two Terminators just tear into each other. And, like, it's so (laughs) fun and cool in so many ways. And it's, like... It reminds me of, like, the Death of Superman story in the comic. Do you remember how, like, the last issue where Superman fights Doomsday, it's all splash pages? Yes. But, like, this this issue feels like what they were going for without doing that, like, splash page gimmick. Mm. So it's just so big. And I, I cannot believe how good these comics do the Terminator action in, in comic book form. Because you, you think it would kind of seem slower or everything, but they're just... Yeah. They just nail it. Uh, it. It was great. And then... Um, and Do I you think, think the death of Superman still holds up? In the comics? Like, like you think if you, re- if you read that volume, it would still be, like, impactful and cool? Or do you think it would just I be... I don't know. I have the trilogy. Like, the death, yeah. funeral, and uh, return of Superman. I, I just haven't touched any of those issues yeah. since it came out. I don't, I don't know. It, it, it's Justice League International, right? It's like the weird Justice League at the time. The, like, That's true. Ice yeah. and fire Booster and Blue Beetle. And, yeah. yeah. Like, and they're like, we better go stop Doomsday. I'm like, okay, Booster. Why don't, yeah. you, why don't you sit down, pal? Yeah. Um, another thing that's great about these comics is that they just remind you of what a one-man army, a single Terminator is. Because in the <laughs> movies, you usually see like a Terminator taking on like two people or something. These Terminators yeah. take down entire police force, entire that's like military good. units. They're just unstoppable. Um, and then the last story in this collection was Terminator the Enemy Within, which was written by... Nope, the Wikipedia Suspense. thing has failed me. Okay. It failed oh, I'm me. Sorry. Um, I don't think it was James Robinson again. Um, okay. Anyway, someone. Mm-hmm. It, it's now dealing with the fact that the Terminator they reprogrammed has reprogrammed itself to go after them, Uh-oh. and also the guy is trying to get rid of the Terminator programming in his head. So they do that, but maybe the guy who did it steals the information is going to go start Skynet anyways. So it's all this big. Uh, this this fight that's leading to the end. It's less strong than any of the stories that have been in this collection, but if, okay. if this is like the end of these characters in this story, it, it's still pretty good. So, okay. um, you know, uh, acid being used to stop some Terminators. It's, the guy, the Terminator that like reprogrammed itself and rebuilt itself out of the parts of the one it defeated has like these horns on its head and is all spiky. Mm-hmm. It's as 90s as you can get. Leather jacket wearing Terminator <laughs> covered in oh, yeah. spikes. Um, 
But yeah, the Dark Horse Terminator comics, great. Love them. If you wow. if you like Terminator okay. uh, and you haven't read these comics, do so. I would definitely recommend. Uh, and that's just the volume one. There's a, there's a volume two uh, at the Omnibus, but it's not part of the Unlimited on uh, uh, Comicsology. That's how so. they get you. First one's free. The first one's free. They give you a taste. Yeah. A taste of those 90s Terminator oh, comics. Sweet, sweet Terminator yeah. comics. Yeah. You know what? I tell you what. It's nice having read this after Dark Fate because it Dark just kind Fate of... Dark was a hard time for you. This was like a cool, cool glass in the desert. Let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. I, I was willing it... to drink the sand for water when it comes to Terminator, but this book was like, no, no, no. We've got yeah. real water for Some you. Some refreshing yeah. water. Coffee, yeah. maybe? It is our it is our coffee break. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what else have you read? Uh, you really you really gave that some thought, and I appreciate <laughs> it. All right. Is that it for you reading wise? Should I rapid fire these last three? It's not it for my reading wise. Do you want me to do my last one and okay. then you do your thing? No. Okay. Uh, as you know, I've I've had a subscription to. No. Uh, I did a one month. I did a one month free trial to uh, Archie Unlimited. Yep. And by and the you, end, they had made some they had made some changes to the app. I gotta say, it was a little bit easier to use towards the end. Still not good. Still among the worst apps I've ever had to use. The Archie app. Um, <laughs> but I did successfully get through all modern Archie mm -hmm. that is currently available. Uh, the last thing I had on my list was Josie and the Pussycats Volume Two, by Marguerite Bennett and Cameron Diordo mm -hmm. with uh, Audrey Mock as illustrator. I read the first volume of this forever ago having loved all the other stuff, and it just didn't do it for me. Uh -huh. It's this weird... The tone of it is very weird, where it's more adult than, like, even the Archie, the main Archie comic line of the modern stuff still has a very teeny bop feel to it. The Josie and the Pussycats one, they, fe they are adults, they feel like adults, it's different. But it has, like, mm -hmm. a weird, surreal aspect to it that doesn't really gel with that. And so I didn't really intend to read volume two after reading volume one. But as I was closing out my Archie Unlimited app, I was like, I got to do it. Mm -hmm. I got to do it. I read volume two and it starts with with uh, one of the Alexander Cabot, who's sort of the kind of the antagonist character, taking them to this ice castle a la Ooh. Frozen. And it's just like you got to pick a lane, Josie and the Pussycats. So it didn't work for me. I don't like it. It's a two volume series. I don't like either one of them. There's one out there now that's not on the app. I think it's maybe too new. It's called Josie and the Pussycats in Space, Ooh. which is supposed to be like a serious sci fi uh -huh. uh, based, you know, kind of spoofing, not spoofing, but it's, you know, adapting the old cartoon of the same name. Mm -hmm. I would like to read that, but I don't recommend Josie and the Pussycats. Uh, volume one and two in the new Archie stuff. Uh, my wife enjoyed them. She thought they were very funny. Whatever. I'm just saying they're. <laughs> you know uh she she was reading it and telling me like she was really enjoying it and uh th a lot of the jokes were landing she was sending sending me clips of it so uh oh that's funny mm -hmm. because my wife just read that terminator omnibus and she said <laughs> it was stupid no hillary she did oh uh, yeah she read the don't terminator. ask her about it she's too upset <laughs> okay hey it was uh i was yeah. i was corrected in chat it's john edgington who wrote the last uh, Terminator story I was talking about, Enemy Within. Oh, okay. So, wow, we got fact checkers in the crowd. Thanks, yes, fact yep. checkers. Yeah, keeping me... Uh, honest. Keeping me honest. Yeah, all right. Sure. So the last thing I read was a Comixology original, like a Comixology exclusive original thing. Uh, the one that I sent to you? The one I wanted you to read? What was it? Oh, I don't know. Go ahead. Comixology original? What was it? Well, I can't remember the title now, but I tell me know. what you read. Maybe that's it. Uh, it was uh, Quarter Killer by uh, Vita Ayla. And I think it's Danny Lore who's doing the art, or Jamie Jones who's the artist. Um, look, the point is, the, the, the comic is called Quarter Killer. You can only get it if you're doing uh, the Amazon's Comixology Unlimited. So that's probably going to be a roadblock for some people, who, uh, yeah. such as Nick. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. What? Josie and the Pussycats in Space is on Unlimited. For free? See, yeah. So you I mean, not it. for free, yeah. So Unlimited works where you there are books that you can read if you have Comixology Unlimited, and then it also gives you a discount on like buying books. But not everything is part of the Unlimited reading. So it's kind of like... Jo Josie, Josie in Space has the Unlimited banner right yeah. on it. Okay, then that's, that's it. 
Um, can so, you can you commit on camera to read that and tell Josie me about and it? the Pussycats in space? Yeah, I've never read a Josie and the Pussycats. I'll I'll look okay. at it. I'll look at it and see what it's. You Thanks, said man. it's a real like sci-fi. I'll tell you what it's like. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Yeah, Black Ghost is what I wanted you to read. The Black oh, Ghost Hard Revolution. Okay. Um. So it's basically like it's the same as like Amazon Prime. You can watch some movies if you have Prime. You can't watch everything. So it's definitely like unlimited. Comicsology has been helpful in reading like the non Marvel DC stuff for me. I've been reading a lot of Dark Horse or side things. They've got like Elf Quest on there. It's how I've been reading Shadow Man and uh, how I read Bloodshot and all that stuff. But it's not like all inclusive like it is with a uh, Marvel or the DC app. Yeah. Uh, so I decided to read Quarter Killer because it's a. Uh, I thought it was like going to be about the arcades. I thought it was, we were going to be like dealing with like the arcade <laughs> scene. It's not. This is like a cyberpunk comic story uh about a girl who needs her dad rescued so she goes to a place where her dad said if i you know you need help go there so it's this, like these mercenaries who quit being mercenaries and now hang out in arcades and help people uh and it's kind of like a cyberpunk story but i don't know the art it's weird there's this weird uh what juxtaposition between the two where the art is very, like, colorful and goofy and looks like it's coming from, like, a junior or young adult graphic novel. But then the story's a lot more serious. And I don't know. I don't think it necessarily lands. Um, it It's an interesting take on cyberpunk, one that, like, I haven't seen in other things. Um, and they were trying to go... Uh, the authors at the end, they were talking about how, like, when they read something like... Uh, neuromancer or see other cyberpunk uh work you tend not to see uh like the african-american influence like cultural influence seems to have like disappeared in in yeah. those cyberpunk futures it's a very like whitewash or you get a lot of like asian influences but you you never really see what happened to like african-american culture or you know like uh, how black panther shows like the afro futurism you don't yeah. see that in like a lot of cyberpunk stories. You don't okay. see what happens with like clothing or or hip hop or uh or just like where this goes. You see everything else. And so they wanted to do um a story that that focuses on that. And I think in that okay. case it succeeds. I just don't think the story itself was super compelling for me. Mm. Um so mm -hmm. your mileage might vary depending on how you feel about the art. Uh, it's kinetic, but at the same time being a bit, uh, over-exaggerated for my taste. I don't know. Uh, there's okay. one part where, like, a character's standing there, and she's supposed to be, like, this sexily drawn woman, but she, but she only has, like, one leg, like, because they forgot to draw the second leg in. It was interesting. Oh, so it looks like the funny. lamp from A Christmas Story. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it was an interesting thing. It was part of the unlimited i haven't really read any this was the only exclusive thing i've read so uh okay yeah i mean depending on what you're looking for this uh this story might do it for you or not so do you think it'll be better or worse than when you read josie and the pussycats in space I... if you had to compare <laughs> right, that's the last thing i read i, I watched okay. all those movies. oh it's not all right oh my gosh I, I did watch one more movie i talked about it on the, all the book show real quick oh. i watched uh comic book confidential it's a documentary on the history of comic books, not the history of superheroes. Uh, you could watch like superheroes unmasked from like 2003 for that kind of stuff. This is like the okay. history of comics when they're like starting in comic book form being sold in like the twenties or thirties. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. And it just kind of goes through there and it's interviews. This came out in 88. So they're interviewing Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, Will Eisner, um, you know, about like the spirit and uh, the early work uh so they're going through like each decade uh yeah. when they they only really talk about like marvel characters for a little bit they really start focusing on like underground comics in the 80s um okay like zippy uh the conehead you get a lot of uh uh like underground comedy comics that are trying to be very subversive you have like american splendor in there so it, it's and it's a it's quirkily designed it's really it's really a strange it's very jazzy. Like, there's okay. a lot of jazz music going on. I don't know. If you want to see, like, a history of, like, the medium, okay. watch Comic Book uh, comic book Confidential. It, I mean, they focus on Mad Magazine a lot. Um, 
So I learned a lot about stuff that I didn't know about, but it wasn't necessarily what I was looking for. But if, <laughs> if that okay. is what you're looking for, I think this is pretty good if you haven't seen That's it. Uh, I watched okay. it on the Criterion channel. I'm sure you can find Ooh, it other places. Fancy. Yes. All right. What okay. else have you read, Nick? Uh, two more things. Legends of Zeta the Space Girl by Ben Hackey. So this is uh, the second volume what of a Zeta weird the week. Space Girl. I know, it really was. <laughs> it really was a bizarre week. Next week, I'm uh, going to read X-Men, Spider-Man, and Batman, and that's it. Yeah, yeah you're that's so it. basic. Oh, and Josie um, and the Pussycats in space. <laughs> you have to. That's required. Uh, everybody heard it. We can play the tape what? back. Oh, no! This is the second Z to the Space Girl, and the first one is about a girl who finds this little device, and it pulls her into this alien world, and she's part of a prophecy that ends up sort of saving this planet. Uh-huh. The second one, um, we kind of check back in on that world, and there's sort of like a... A, not a cult, but there's there's this kind of a cult around the concept of Zeta, the space girl. Uh-huh. And so when the actual Zeta is there, there's kind of a they've got this stand in plus Zeta. And so there's kind of this jockeying of like, got to get rid of real Zeta because they've already kind of moved on from that. So a little deeper than I expected from a, you know, a junior level comic, right. but it was good. And I mean, this was not a series that I would have just picked up on my own. It was when my son was reading. Um, but now I've read the first two volumes, and I gotta just uh, power through it this because I'm liking it. This is Ben Hatke. Uh, yeah. Also does the Mighty Jack series, which ev- which eventually crosses over. There, there's yeah, like a, there's like two Mighty world. Jacks, and then yeah, yeah, Mighty Jack and Zeta the Space Girl, which I thought was like such a cool idea. So yeah. I know if I had been a kid and that was happening, I would have been like, what? Yeah, this kind of thing did not exist. You remember, I had I just had Jesus yeah. and Samson comic books, so different. <laughs> Finally, I read the the Big Hero Six manga by Haruki Uno. This is a two volume uh, manga. That's mm-hmm. a, it's it, a it's a loose adaptation of the movie. It's okay, not a, so this isn't it, the thing that didn't really inspire the movie. No, this this came at, like as a result of the movie, but it's unique in that it is it diverges in pretty significant ways. Uh, it worked pretty well, but. I'm just I like Big Hero Six. Like I, right. I like stories with Big Hero Six, and I always want there to be like, okay, they're formed. Now let's have an adventure. And it's like they just don't really do that. Um, like Chris Claremont has a Big Hero Six series that he wrote a while back, which is decent. Um, very very different from what you see in the movie. Right. Um, Big Hero Six plays a pretty prominent part in uh, the Spider-Man Ends of the Earth thing that I was reading a few weeks back. Um, wow, did they? I yeah, completely forget forgot about that. Yeah, he goes around like recruiting from around the world and gets Big Hero Six. Wow. Um, and in the Ends of the Earth special, like the like the one off Ends of the Earth special, um, it does a story that focuses on each of these groups. And so Big Hero mm. Six is really represented in that. Okay. But they are in the main the main storyline as well. Mm-hmm. But I enjoyed the Claremont. I like this manga, and I've never read the Sunfire and the Big Hero Six originals because they're just impossible to find. Yeah, you'd have to get so, them on eBay. It feels like now. And they're hard to get. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know why they're not out there, but uh, yeah. this was this was pretty good. This was pretty good. Okay. All right. Hit us up with Let's... your co- your quarter bin. Are you not doing anything? I talked about six movies. Oh. <laughs> all right. And they Fair were enough. all Batman related in some way. So Fair I feel enough. like okay. yep. I, I covered my Batman. Yeah. Understood. My Batman big of the week was any of those movies. Okay. Except for Joker. I've got... <laughs> I've got kind of an interesting one today. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, I know, in fact, that I did not pay a quarter for this because it was a freebie in Toys R Us. Uh, This came out in 1999. That's why it says not for resale. Yes. Okay. Yep. Came out in 1999. This is Back to the Future, Harvey Comics, 1991. This is 1999? One. 91. Oh, 91. Okay. Yeah. But what's interesting about this is that it... um, all of the, uh, like, all of the advertisements inside of it are for the show. Right. The, the anim- Back to the Future, the animated series. Yeah. Um, this came out ahead of the series to kind of, like, whet the appetite for a Back to the Future yeah. animated series. So I got this at Toys R Us when I was a child. It's a, it's a pretty thin, thin volume. Um, there are three issues that Harvey put out that's, like, a little three-issue Back to the Future story. Uh-huh. Um, but this is just a teaser for the show. Right. All right? Which has like Homer Simpson doing the voice of. Yes. Of... Doc Brown. Yeah, the show ran on CBS for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, some of the voices in the cartoon, like Mary Steenburgen and uh, Thomas uh, Wilson, are Biff and uh, Clara. Yep. But 
Christopher Lloyd only does the live action right. wraparound like the segments. Bill Nye kind of stuff like the Bill Nye stuff and it's voiced by Dan Castellaneta who's Homer Simpson yeah uh, who's genie does from a, Aladdin yeah who does a pretty decent uh, Doc Brown but then anyway. it's also Aladdin doing the voice of Marty is it isn't it uh isn't oh it the... it's not no 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 it's not uh, it's not what's his name what's his name Scott, from Full House Scott Weinger Scott okay. Weiner something like that all right no it's different um all right so this, I had this... I got the McDonald's toys Burger King or McDonald's yes. whoever put them out yep. I had like Marty in the uh Marty's on a hoverboard hoverboard is Doc in the car Doc's in the DeLorean and the dog and is sparked. Einstein is in the train yes I had the train and well. Jules no Vern the littlest kid uh -huh. um that little kid is voiced by Josh Ke Josh Keaton ah, who would later voice Spider-Man Spider and the, and the Green and Green Lantern in the Green Lantern animated series. Wow. So anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of fun toys for that. Here's the story. It's called The Gang's All Here. So Einstein the dog is chasing Marty because Marty's playing cat sounds on his uh, sound effects keychain, which was a very <laughs> real thing in 1991, let me tell you. Oh, my word, yeah. So Marty gets chased up a tree, and Jules Brown, Doc's older son, uses his portable trampoline invention to get him down. Uh, Doc and Clara are very concerned about Einstein's behavior, the dog, again, because he's been just acting crazy. Uh, Doc does some tests and figures out that Einstein has a sickness that's making him see everyone as a cat. Oh, Doc no. calls them, hold on, are you ready? Doc calls them cataracts in his eyes. Get it? You know, I was worried about drinking water before you told me that because I, I was afraid that. of a spit take. Yeah. But I, but it, I had no reason to be afraid. No. Uh, so they had, they realize they need juniper berries, and so they're going to go back to 1920s because that was used to make liquor, I guess, during Prohibition. So right away, you got a Prohibition story <laughs> is what you're wetting the appetites of yeah. children in the animated series. Why Doc would they Marty deny just the common American alcohol in the 20s, Timmy? Well, I don't know, Billy. <laughs> Pretty much. Doc and Marty head to the DeLorean. They should take matters into their own hand. Hour. And end Would up in an organized crime be more prolific? And Hold on. <laughs> because organized crime is coming. It does play a role in this. It's 1927. Prohibition's in full swing. Uh, Marty asks a cop where he can get a drink. Because Marty's real stupid in the show. He's so um, stupid. He's, he's the worst in the show. He's really stupid in the show. Anyway, he tangles with this cop and the sound effects machine goes off and the cop thinks he's making fun of him. So he gets thrown in jail. And who is he sharing a cell with? Muggsy Tannen. Oh, Biff Tannen. boy. Grandpa, you know what? great grandpa. I don't know. Give it up for the Tannens. They're dumb, but they proliferate they like no one's business. They're they the sure dumbest do. rabbits in the yeah. hutch. <laughs> they, anyway. are, they are the example of a, the, oh, what's his, the, the movie Idiocracy in real life. Yeah, so. yeah. I could think of another example in real life. <laughs> uh, uh, Marty, so Marty's thrown in here with Muggsy Tan, and Muggsy sees Marty and thinks that it's his brewmaster, Bathtub Jim McFly. So Doc steps in and convinces Mug Muggsy that Marty is actually Jim's cousin, Zipper McFly, mm -hmm. who is a major crime boss. Uh -huh. So now we get into the organized crime. Juniper berries used for gin. There you go. So uh, Yeah, that makes sense. So Muggsy Tannen who is Biff, calls him a butthead several times, um, wants to take Doc and Zipper McFly, that's Marty, to meet his boss, Eggs Benedict. Oh, gosh. <laughs> is that real? <laughs> it is real, Eric. You know so what? I liked this show as a kid. Your yeah. son loved this show when you showed it yeah. to him the first time. Yeah. I was with him when he like yeah. when we put on the intro, and he's like, the train! Yeah. It was like he, he was ready it. to flip a car when the train he showed up. It. He loved it. Uh, anyway, so Eggs Benedict decides that he wants to partner with Doc and Marty rather than having like competition uh, with organized crime. Sure. So, so they take him to Bathtub Jim, who's Marty's like great grandpa or something. Turns out that Bathtub Jim McFly wants to be a pharmacist, so he's actually glad to use the juniper berries to make medicine instead of gin. Yeah, you can use it for medicine. Yes. Then Marty does a whole extended quote of the Untouchables, which again were kids in the '90s really into the Untouchables. I I don't I wasn't, <laughs> but maybe others were. And at this point, yeah, I wonder. Boy, you're chasing the uh, I don't know. He does, the that, 1920s, he does yeah. that whole you put them in the morgue scene, you know. Yep. Uh, Eggs and Muggsy come back to check on what's going on, 
Uh, and they realize something's afoot. So they get Doc and Jim. Marty runs out and uses his keychain to make it sound like a big shootout is happening. And so they think Marty's gang is there. So they let them go. And Marty says that he'll let them go if they let Jim McFly uh, out of their little gang. And they agree. So Jim decides that he's going to move his family to a nice little place called Hill Valley, where he's going to become a pharmacist. Finally. Doc and Marty head back to the future and give Ine the medicine. Wait, 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 wait. They head where? Back to the future. All right. Yeah. They give Ayn the medicine. And then Ayn's fine? Yeah, yeah, yeah Ayn's fine and everything's fine. Yeah. Hmm. So wait, That's who's the it. doctor? There's no doctor. No, the guy who wants to become a pharmacist. Yeah, he goes to, he moves his family to Hill Valley. Right, but That's, he's not like. great grandpa. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, did it make you want to watch the series? No. <laughs> I think it's really funny that it was all about, like, gin and prohibition and, yeah. like, gangsters, <laughs> you know, for, for yeah. kids. It just seems seems like a weird choice, yeah. but... We've been to the 50s. Yeah, they... We've been to the future. We've been to the Wild West. Yeah. What's left? Prohibition. I know. It's funny, too. It was 1927, not even 1925, you know? Oh. All, everything else was, like, 55, 85, yeah. 2015, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's this, and then there's a three issues of like a little story, but that they didn't they didn't make an ongoing comic out right. of it, which is a surprise. The first Back to the Future when he's like showing it, uh, at Marty all the places he goes, like let's say you wanted to witness the birth of Christ, and it's just so funny because yeah. like they're like or travel to the fifties. I know, <laughs> but it's funny because he he types in December twenty fifth zero 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 in the movie, yeah. which we learned it's, from Y two K would have been a problem. Especially I guess for an 80s that. computer. Yeah, it wouldn't know where to go. It would have sent him into some kind of like a quantum zone. He would have been dead. What stands out to me here is that Marty's not really a primary character in the Back of the Future animated series. You know, it's really like Doc and Clara and the kids, and Marty's like a side character. Well, isn't that the way the cartoon is? That's what I mean. No. But this was all Doc and Marty going on right. a time travel adventure together, and everybody else is really Which sidelined. Which not the but promise yeah. we get, yeah. No, there's only one episode of the animated series where Doc and Marty go on an adventure, just the two of them. Hey, if they're in Chicago, did they they had yeah. to drive there? Did they drive or fly no, to in, Chicago? No, in, in the animated series, it's a space and time machine. Boo. Doc made some upgrades to it, Eric. Oh, my word. Just it. He just suddenly figured out quantum mechanics on a whole yes. different level? Yes. Yeah, okay. He All right, off Doc. his toilet, hit his head. Again? And then he... Then he, yeah, yeah, and then he knew. Yeah, I have a feeling Clara pushed him off that toilet this probably, time. She probably did. Yeah. Anyway, that's my quarter bin for the week. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, strange week. Strange week with some, like, weird picks. I mean, I feel like I it's my fault having focused on, like, we're just watching all that stuff. But, like, I have to play uh, the Batman Telltale games still, and I oh, haven't yeah. finished the Arkham series. So I had to play Arkham Knight. And then, like, doing that, I'm like, well, it's been forever since I've watched the Dark Knight movies, but I should watch this Joker film. And I've got yeah. so I've got time during the day, so let's do that. And then Justice League Dark Apocalypse War is on the DC app at the moment. Yeah, you got to do it. So I had to do it. So I understand. I, I, do have the, I, I do have the others available. Bloodlines and Red Sun are both on the DC app. They are, yeah. And Hell to Pay is on HBO Max at the moment. But Man of... Man of Tomorrow is out now. But yeah, it's but not you have to like app. rent can, it or something. Yeah, you can only buy it at this yeah. point. It looks like I it kind of has a um, a Steam Boy look to it. I'm I'm interested in. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, I'm interested in watching it. I played maybe the first chapter of the Batman Telltale game. I played through the entirety of the Back to the Future Telltale game, uh, which was then adapted into a graphic novel. So mm -hmm. maybe I'll have to read that now. What? So. The graphic novel, Citizen Brown. Which oh, you is haven't a, read it. Or I thought you I already had. Okay. No, I haven't. I, I played the game, and then they adapted it to the graphic novel. So I think that's the one I'm on. So yeah. i got to pick that up. Yeah. Pretty so, solid. Yeah. Ooh, all right. I promise I'll read some more normal stuff for next week. Uh, no promises. I'll have finished Moon Knight at least. Okay. So, all yeah. Right. The thing is, I was reading a bunch of stuff, and then I kind of finished them. i got to get back to Shadow Man. Yeah. And now I don't know. I can't read any more Terminator. I yeah. can't read. I, I'm not paying $12 to... Buy a digital copy of Terminator Volume Understood. 2. Understood. Maybe I can find it on Hoopla. <laughs> oh, maybe you could. Maybe you could. Oh, maybe I can. Check it. <laughs> <laughs> that was fake typing on a real keyboard. <laughs> yeah. It was. I, I really. Yeah. I believed you. All right. Well, you. then, uh, we'll we'll be talking more comics and stuff next week. Do you know anything that you're gonna like have done if people wanted to read along with you or watch well, along with uh, you? Well, there. 
they're they're relaunching like milestone comics over at dc and i've never read the original static shock series oh. so i'm gonna go back and read static shock uh i keep meaning to read devil dinosaur so maybe this is the week but this is the week. uh no. definitely static shock probably some of jason aaron's hulk that's probably where i'm gonna be next week uh, all right so because i love jason sense. aaron's hulk and you hated it I didn't like the first volume. We'll see where okay. they, we'll see how I feel about volume two. All right. Well, again, this show is part of the Radio Meanwhile Network, and you can find more about the show and just like it at the network's website, radiomeanwhile.com, and you can find past episodes of this on YouTube or the website to see what we have read in the past. That's like, right. Like Doc Brown and Marty McFly, you can go back yeah, to the back past. Back to 1920s. To see what we were reading in the 1920s. Teach kids about prohibition. Yeah. Yep. Seems like right. it's causing more problems than it's solving. If you ask They're me. All gangsters. They're all gangsters. It looks so fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you in the future. I heard Chris's dad ended up in the bottom of the river with cement shoes. That's a story. <laughs> Kids love that kind of thing. They really do. <laughs> all right, they bye, really everybody. Do. Yeah.